Hi, welcome to the 3D Pendan. Recently, I posted a video on how to make jewelry findings. If you happen to miss it, the link is in the description. Since then, I got some requests such as, uh, so when are we getting to some real finished wearable pieces? Okay, how about right now? Let's start with something simple, like a daisy pendant or some version of it. Let's start with the easy part. Draw a pattern of a daisy in several sizes. Or, if you like you can print a ready-made pattern for this project from the 3D Pendant Etsy store. The link is below in the description. It also doubles up as an earring pattern and accommodates all kinds of variations. Speaking of variations, if you stick around to the end, I will show you a few of those. Cover your pattern with a clear 3D pen friendly surface. Here I'm using plexiglass surface treated with clear acrylic coating. And if you need to know more about it and working surfaces in general, there are two of my videos on that subject in the description below. I tape a clear protector pocket to my plexi surface to facilitate quick pattern changing. And if you do that, make sure your pocket is securely fastened to your surface so it doesn't wiggle around while you're working. While you can make a lot of fun variations with using different colors, I will work in white for this demo since that will show best on the video. This is a good project for beginners you get a lot of initial penmanship practice with tracing the patterns. Always start in the center and try to finish each stroke in one go. It is helpful to spin your project around to keep working at the most comfortable angle. Once you have established the main four directions of the layout, up and down and left and right, keep adding the petals in between and then in between those. That way, as you get to the smaller sizes of the pattern and you won't have as much room, you can decide to stop at 8 petals if it looks like it's going to get too crowded with 16. This may vary depending on the thickness of the line of your particular pen. As you work, the center will start to accumulate an awful lot of extra plastic, so you may choose to remove some of it with your pliers, or smooth it with a tool as you go, or some of both, as needed. Wait until each part cools before removal, so you don't deform it. And keep going until you have all the sizes you want. This step is entirely optional, but I prefer to bake my pieces while they are still flat. By putting them in the oven or toaster oven on a flat ceramic tile lined with a Teflon baking liner. At 450 for about 10 to 13 minutes. Start watching it like a hawk after the first 10 minutes and get it out as soon as the centers level off. It may look here like it's a very subtle difference but baking does even out the lines by making them less wiggly, smoothes the centers, removes most of the unwanted hair strands, 
plus it gets rid of all the sharp edges that could catch on the clothes or hair of the jewelry wearer. Scratchy jewelry is unpleasant to wear. The downside of baking is that sometimes you get a heat distortion you don't like and need to redo some part, especially with the smaller sizes. Most of the time is what you see is what you get, but occasionally the heat shifts the design a bit. Sometimes it's okay and sometimes mm, not so much. And sometimes it actually improves things by giving the pieces more organic, natural look. But that's for you as the designer to decide and edit. So try it and decide if the baking technique is for you. I personally think it produces more finished look and keep in mind you can only bake flat parts. There are some related baking video links in the description if you need to know more. For this particular design, we'll need to make a hole in the center of each part for stringing them onto a head pin. So let's make those next. To establish the center of each piece, measure, or if you have the 3D pen then Etsy pattern, you can cut up an extra printed copy of it for easy center location. And then you just burn a hole in it with your wood burning tool with a thin pointed tip. Or drill it in the traditional way with a drill. Either way, make sure the holes fits the size of the filament you are planning to use for the head pin. Or alternatively, you can make your parts on a turntable that has a center wire axis, which will produce pieces with the hole already built in. However, if you are planning to bake these, you will need to put a glass bead into the hole or a tiny screw to prevent the holes from closing on you in the baking process. And now for the parts we will need to put all this together. Findings. All the details on how to make jewelry findings are of course in the findings video which is linked in the description. But let's do a brief recap of the three findings we will need for this project. Head pin, eye pin and a neck ring. Head pins are essentially little sticks with a cap. So you can hang beads or whatever else without them sliding off. Put a piece of Teflon sheet down so you don't stick to your griddle. Turn it to medium heat and wait till it melts the filament enough to form a decent head. And as usual, cool it on something before it can be peeled off. It's that simple. Or you can do the same thing on an iron if that's more convenient. Just find some way to keep the Teflon sheet up there or a piece of parchment so you don't mess up your iron. Speaking of different head pin making options, you can also simply use your wood burning tool and a piece of Teflon sheet. Just stabilize it somehow so you have both of your hands free to work. For this project, I will make an eye pin with eye on both sides, perpendicular to each other. But let's start with forming a single eye first, so you can see the process. Grab your straightened filament piece with needle nose pliers 
so the end barely peeks out on the other side of the plier jaws. Steam and twist and hold and here we go. Or if you don't happen to own needle nose pliers, you can accomplish the same thing with two thin dowels or knitting needles stuck together with a piece of tape. Using wooden dowels or bamboo skewers doesn't hurt the filament as easily as the metal tools, so there is actually advantage to using those. Works just as well. Here I have a double-sided eye pen in white. Close up you may see that the filament usually slightly dents in the twisting process, which is rather difficult to avoid since we are softening it. But the way I'm planning to use this, it won't show much. Eventually we will thread one side onto the neck ring. And here we'll put our necklace pendant. Now let's look at how to make the neck ring. Even though you can also find a metal one from a jewelry finding supplier. Or choose a different way of hanging your daisy on a ribbon or leather lace, for example, which makes making a neck ring entirely optional if this looks like too much trouble. I am planning to make one in black for this project, but so you can see better what I'm doing, uh, I will use a silver filament for this demo. At this point, it would be convenient if the filament softened all over all at once. So let's just dunk the whole thing in the boiling water. It will become instant spaghetti, even try to stick to itself like spaghetti, but don't let it. It won't ever overmelt because the water never gets hotter than its boiling point. Form it and hold it. until it's cold. See, it does hold the curve bigger than the original spool size. And now to the smaller kettle spout again to form the closing hook and an eyelet. Which is a process very similar to forming the eye pin. By now, I'm sure you get the idea. All we have to do is to put it all together now. I will use a little piece of cardstock paper to hold my head pin vertical. And then thread my daisy wheels onto it, starting with the smallest one. In this particular variation, I am also putting small white jump rings in between the layers to give the pendant a bit of extra height. How to make those you can find in the video on making the findings or the ones on making the chains and chain mail. So check it out there if you decide to use these. Once you have it all on there, it's time to snip off the head pin, leaving just enough material there to seal the other side, which I will do with a wood burning tool and a piece of Teflon sheet. Here I have to proceed cautiously so I don't smoosh everything together too tight because I would like the layers to continue spinning. The Teflon sheet will stick to the plastic, but will release once everything cools down. So be patient. And then we'll just cut out the support paper. And 
and we are done. In the beginning, I promised to show you some variations. And the pendant I just assembled with the jump rings in between was already one of them. As you may have noticed, the petals were way more pointed than in my original demonstration in the beginning of this video, where I was urging you to make each petal in one stroke. Here, on the other hand, I am deliberately stopping in the middle to create point on top of each petal. Both work. Just be consistent with what you pick. The flower with the all-round petals may look more like this when assembled. Or you may choose not to do petals at all, but just trace the center line of each petal for a more urchin-like structure. Having more space will let you add more lines in between what's already on the pattern. You can use as many sizes as your heart desires. Which may end up looking something like this. Or you can choose just a couple of sizes and the optional center on the pattern and really make it look like a daisy. We already talked about possibly hanging it in a different way, so you can skip making the neck ring. You can modify the shapes in any which way you can think of. And once you get into colors, the variations get endless. The smaller sizes on the last page of the 3D pendant pattern double up as a template for earrings, but that really needs to be another video. So until then, go and make something!